Hey Jerry, I um, I just added some heavy cardboard uh, with with that very sticky brown packing tape to the side of the gecko enclosure because I felt bad for them since they are nocturnal. Um, the side of the enclosure facing the uh, the window, I decided to darken it so they don't get that light hitting their their hide their hide box inside and then they, they can get less stress and more more rest in the daytime they don't do this at pet shops you know i noticed with the uh nocturnal creatures they really should have them under um black light or red light you know they really shouldn't have that all that damn white light going into the uh the leopard gecko tanks and you know other things scorpions it really stresses them out so uh anyway so uh, i got this from the large box that comes in when lisa orders things um, um i love this uh the packing tape it's really strong as thin as it is it's very sticky and very strong so you know um it's a nocturnal creature so uh that will help right now their hide box is uh is an extra jumbo cardboard egg carton they love it uh, and i also use empty tissue boxes there's no need for people to pay through the nose uh for uh, ornaments and enclosures uh, in the pet stores. Um, Pete was thinking of setting up a very large arboreal terrarium for poison dart frogs. I says, listen, Pete, they're gorgeous. I'll give them that much. They're stunning. But, but they're very pricey. It's, it's a racket. And then he's telling me, oh, you know, the prices of these exotic animals are based on the market. I said, what does that mean? You know, a suggested retail price is like pulling a rabbit out of, out of a hat. I mean, it could be anything. It could be anything to mark, mark up. It's, it, there's no scientific. Now, if it was scientifically determined, you know, then it would be a specified percentage of profit. But... You know, give me a break with the, these exotic pets and, and, and some like arachnids. You could pay a high price for one and it could drop dead on you. And, and what is Megan's uh, excuse? You know, you know, these things, there's no guarantee. You know, they can just drop dead. Oh, really? They can just drop dead. So why are you charging a lot for them? And since the uh, be uh, bearded dragon, which... Um, Pete has a male and a female, and he's thinking of us uh, uh, letting the male fertilize the eggs. The bearded dragons is technically like diamonds in South Africa. There are a dime a dozen. They they bang out so many eggs; it's incredible. And and then you know, if somebody's selling them like making fifty dollars a pop for the babies, that's a that's a fortune because they really do bang out a lot of eggs. A female bearded dragon you know so anyway he wants to give me one because uh, he has red ones he has the uh, the red hybrids I told him if you if I get one from you I want a male because the males have the big head and the slender body and males are more entertaining they do push-ups and and they bob their head females just wave with one hand very slowly you know it's like a um, a hierarchy amongst communal creatures it, it shows appeasement to the alpha you know but uh, I, I, I this is how people have to think you know I mean they have to be use their imagination and and actually create things homemade that work that work very well all right of course there's curly on top of the, the vinegaroon enclosure which has the isopods uh, at full blast and okay you know what they are the roaches with the buffalo beetles and here I have a 
uh, dollar zone from Saddlebrook wooden uh, mercury thermometer to keep me aware of the ambient temperature in the room. Oh, by the way, the uh, the medical people said that the old-fashioned mercury thermometer is still more accurate than the digital thermometers they have now. I guess it's like somebody saying the quality of sound from music is better with a vinyl album than, uh, than a digital mp3.